Okay, some thoughts about taking your carburetor apart. Um, the plastic cap screws were pretty easy to get off. The float bowl screws were another story. Um, these screws are made out of depleted uranium, uh, but the heads are made out of uh, antimony and lead. And then the slot, it's like for a metric screwdriver. It's not quite a one, but it isn't a two. So it's very easy. What I'm trying to say is they're hard to get out. Very uh, easy to strip. And then the Japanese have put it in, uh, torqued them down with uh, using a, um, a Sherman tank in, uh, in creeper gear as a fulcrum to torque them. So... Uh, I used a, a fresh screwdriver, a nice, it's a Craftsman, but it's clean. It's not been, I, I haven't been, you know, using it as a drift. And a vice grips usually work pretty well to kind of crack them loose. Um, the jets in there also uh, were very difficult to get out. Uh, Stanley makes an excellent screwdriver for this. Um... It's the only one I have. It's the only one I've ever known to work in for pilot jets. Because it fits the hole just perfectly. And it and the tip fits in it so snug that when you're done unscrewing it, it lifts the pilot jet out. Okay. When you're working on your carburetors, don't flip them. Rotate them. Clockwise, counterclockwise, whatever. Keep this carburetor's parts on this side. Keep this carburetor's parts on this side. Put the same parts back in the same carburetor. This is two carburetors bolted together, if you didn't know. Um, how this is works. This has a needle on this little uh, deal here, this little uh, slide with the little gasket on the top there and you can see it has a pin at the top but it's not adjustable so it goes this is the main jet and it's screwed into the body of the carburetor and the needle goes in there like so and then at idle this is preset so it's pulled out enough, if you can see those little tiny holes, that the gas comes out of there just a little bit. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a slightly little tiny, teeny little washer underneath there. So I'm going to take this down to the ace and find a washer to fit underneath there. And it's going to pull that out just a little bit. I'm, I'm exaggerating, how, exaggerating how much it's going to pull it out, but just a tick more to fatten it up a little bit. See what happens. I bet you cure a lot of that hiccup. Uh, there's a bit of dirt and dust and junk and crap in there. Uh, so we're going to fix those. Uh, do they only go one way? They might go two ways. No, they might go just one way. Um, so we're going to clean that out. Um, we had a bit of debris in the bottom of our... Bottom of our... Bottom of our Hope bowls. Let me get the screwdriver off there. I can dig at it a little bit. A little bit of crap. And you know, when when this fills up with gas, this crap could float a little little bit of junk out. It just takes it just takes like that much to plug up your idle jet and your idle jet hole is so small you want to look at those and make sure that there nothing in those you can take a, a wire and wire it out uh, don't have a wire fine enough um, get yourself a wire brush or a wire wheel and pluck a wire out of that seems to work pretty well for me to clean those out just to make sure the passages are clean make sure your main jet is clean there's your main jet. Main jet came out with the emulsifier, and actually, you can see the hole. You know, remember this bike ran. 
So we're trying to make it run better. Well, I'm going to go and find some carburetor cleaner and a couple little washers for my needles. So I'll be right back. <laughs> 